There are a bunch of different lures and strategies, techniques to throw at the fish in the month of March. Today on Bass Fishing Declassified, you're gonna to get to hear the members from our team share their favorite lure to throw during this month. And if you live in their region or if you don't live in their region, you're gonna get a chance to learn some valuable information. Hey, stay tuned guys, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this. With the month of March rolling in, what that means is our air temperatures are gonna to start to climb and our days are getting longer in terms of the amount of sunlight that we're gonna have. And what that does is it helps increase water temperatures, which is gonna push the fish into their pre-spawn phase pretty much around the entire country. If the ice is not on the water still, you're gonna have fish that are moving into a pre-spawn phase. So what that means is they're gonna be moving shallower, they're gonna be roaming a bunch of flats and they're gonna be looking for an easy meal. One of the best ways to catch those fish is with the hover strolling technique. Now specifically, I, use, I like to use the core tackle hover rig. This is a 364 ounce head. And then I'll pair that up with a Berkley Powerbait Max Scent four and a quarter inch flat worm. Now in this case, I like the larger size in any green pumpkin color. This is the Gobiashi color. And when you insert the jig head inside of your flat worm, what this does is it creates a fantastic slow gliding motion. This bait is tantalizing to the fish and they can't pass it up. So I'm gonna be looking for any sort of shallow flats that have a rock to sand or gravel transition, areas where maybe you have a little bit of fresh weed starting to pop up along some rock veins or some large boulders. And if you're fishing someplace that's not uh, a natural lake per se, but you've got a reservoir that has creek arms, Throw it on your channel swing banks, any of your rock transitions or your shallow points, places where those fish are gonna start pulling up to feed and at the same time absorbing some of that sunlight. It's one of those baits that just seems to catch a pile of fish and it catches big fish too. One of the other places I love to throw them are on bluff ends as well as stair-stepping rock. So where you have a little bit of ledge rock that kind of stair steps down. I like to throw the hover rig on those as well. The fish just seem to get up on those little steps and sometimes they'll even spawn in those areas too. So if you have some early spawners that are gonna be spawning during the month of March, those little rock transitions and those little bluff stair steppy areas can be great places to catch spawners too. And this little bait right here will catch them. It will catch all the species, your spotted bass, large mouth, small mouth. So don't pass up in the month of March, starting to use your hover strolling technique, go out and get yourself some of the core tackle hover rigs, and you'll see this little guy will catch you some fish. Hey guys, Kyle Cordiani here with Bass Fishing Declassified. My favorite bait in the month of March is a Booyah one knocker or hard knocker lipless crankbait. And what's really cool, they've got a lot of awesome colors, quarter ounce, half ounce, three quarter ounce, but they just now released some brand new colors and I'm super stoked. I'm out here in Florida today and I am ready to try some of these new colors out. I'm gonna show you guys some of them. So it's sunny out here today and when it's sunny, you gotta have something chrome and this is one of the new colors right here. It's chrome, it's got a little chartreuse under the jaw and if you noticed, uh, see that little black circle with a K on it? That's a one knocker. If you get one, if you get them all mixed up in your bag, you don't know which is which. See, that one doesn't have the K on the tail. That one does. So that it's like a circle for like one and a K. So one knocker, not a one knocker. What's the difference? If it's not a one knocker, it's got a lot of rattles in it. Makes a lot of noise. One knocker, one knocker. Get it? So it's got one bead in there, one bearing bouncing around. But those are the difference. Same color. These are both half ounce. They got them in quarter ounce. They got six new colors. Check out these new colors. And I love all of them, and they all have secret applications. They all are better at certain times of the year. You know, the colder the water, the more you're going to look at those red colors and the oranges. Uh, and as it starts to warm up, you start to get sunshine. You're going to look at those bright, shiny colors. And any time you're in Florida, something with gold in it. So that new gold color is really cool. But this is my favorite bait during the month of March. And it, it kind of overlaps into February. It can get into April, too. But it, I am always going to have it tied on. And I'm talking about grass fisheries is the main thing I love to fish with them. Uh, so I'm here in Florida today. I've got a nice little flat out here. We're out of the wind. Ideally, you would like a little bit of wind. But for video purposes, got you out of the wind today. I've got a mixture of submerged vegetation here with some dollar pads. So anytime I can find a mixture of vegetation when I'm in a grass fishery, I like that. Or I'm looking for hard edges. Uh, so if you got submerged hydrilla or milfoil, 
uh, even eelgrass, if you can find clumps or hard edges, you can look at it with your active target or you can side scan uh, or just fish around and find it that way. Uh, but I'm going to stand up here and show you guys uh, how I like to work the one knocker or the hard knocker. And if I'm lucky, uh, we'll catch a fish. All right, so before I make a cast, real important, what are you going to fish with your lipless crankbait? Again, these Booyah one knockers are my preference, but there's a lot of good lipless crankbaits out there. Um, this is a 7.3 medium heavy Kistler feeling reel. Uh, it's got a fiberglass transition where it goes from graphite to fiberglass. And so it's got that soft tip. And the reason I like throwing a lipless crankbait, a lot of reaction baits on a soft tip, is it kind of deadens the sensitivity. I mean, you can see the rod vibrating, but you don't feel it as much as you do with a graphite rod. Uh, and so that fiberglass rod, when that fish takes that bait, you know, you see the thud, you feel it. But that, that tip of that rod, because it's fiberglass, is so soft, it lets that bass inhale that bait. Typically, you're moving these baits fast and you feel that bass bite it with a graphite rod, you're gonna feel that bass bite it, and a lot of times you jerk it away from them. So that softer tip lets those fish suck that water in, suck that bait in, get their mouth shut. So this is a Kistler feeling reel. I've got it paired with a 7.3 to one. I like to burn a rattle trap. I mean, there's ways you can catch them yo-yoing and worming them, uh, but today we're gonna burn them. I got warm water, I got 70 something degree water. It's, it's warm outside, I'm in a hoodie, but it's still pretty warm outside. So I'm gonna be burning this trap over this hydrilla. Uh, in this dollar pads right here uh, but I'm throwing it on 15 or 17 pound fluorocarbon and uh, you can get away with braids sometimes if you're really in some thick grass and you have to rip it through there quite a bit but what I'm going to try to do right now is I'm going to rear back and bomb this thing as far as I can and it's only about four foot deep out here so I'm going to start burning it just as fast as I can and I'm trying to come over the top of that submerged vegetation and I want to feel that thing catch it and I want to have to rip it kind of free but I'm literally I'm burning this this is a 7-3 to 1 I'm gonna sit just had a bite. I'm gonna sit here and burn it across this hydrilla and through these dollar pad stems and every now and then you're gonna get caught in it and that's what you want you want to rip it free and if it feels like that bait's fouled up if you see the tip of that Kistler feeling reel ain't shaking then it's probably fouled up and you just want to jerk it free and all of a sudden they will just stop this thing or you'll lose contact with your bait because they hit it coming at you. But that's what you want to do. Uh, I'll make a few more casts for you. See if I can't see if I can't catch one here. There's one. So you get them balled up in grass like that. You just skim them across the top, and they don't even have a clue they're hit. Check that out right there. Check that out. That fish had no idea what to do. Here's a lot of that grass I was fishing. Choked that new custom paint job. Get over to LureNet.com and you can get you some of these. There's only 300 of each one of these in each size. So get you one on there. Uh, use my code, Cordiana15, C-O-R-T-I-A-N-A-1-5. You get 15% off if you use that. And uh, again, LureNet.com. Look at that dude, he just choked that custom chrome trap. And that's a pretty good one, I ain't gonna lie. I hope these tips help you guys catch them on lipless crankbaits in the month of March, late February, it's all good. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. All right, guys, so this time of year on the Tennessee River, especially on lakes like Chickamauga, we get a ton of rain, you know, and when you get that influx of rain on a river system like this, you get a lot of dirty water, which is a pretty challenging situation on, you know, on any lake during the coldest months of the year. And when you mix that, that cold water with the muddy water, you tend to get fish that have smaller strike zones. So fishing baits that have vibration and, and sound is really, really critical to get those those extra strikes when i'm faced with uh, you know those post frontal situations where we got a ton of rain and the water is is you know extraordinarily muddy i like to throw a specific type of chatterbait this boy right here is the big blade that's the big boy and look at it next to the the jackhammer very big difference in in size and this thing throws off more vibration than any other bait that I've ever thrown and that's really important this time of year when you're fishing in muddy water real dirty water uh, a lot of times I like to avoid dirty water but sometimes you can't avoid it because you know you know that the, an area is hot and even if it has dirty water you have to fish it because that's where the fish are and so the big blade chatter bait is going to get me extra strikes it's going to allow me to pull fish with smaller strike zones in general further distances to attack 
back my bait because bass are just very, very curious in general. I think that the, when they feel something uh, that's very prominent, they're gonna go investigate and, and it more than likely attack this bait. Um, I'm gonna fish the big blade the same exact way that I fish any other chatterbait. Um, two to five foot of water is generally the depth. Uh, sometimes shallower, uh, the big blade actually will want to pull up to the surface more than a traditional chatterbait just because of that extra surface area and drag. And so you wanna use heavier weights uh, than you normally would with a, a traditional chatterbait like a jackhammer. Um, but still real shallow water, fishing around cover, vegetation is, is a big time key, uh, fishing around dock posts, brush, uh, stumps, all that stuff that you traditionally throw a chatterbait at is gonna work with the big blade. The, the key is throwing it in the dirty water that, that um, it's more conducive to getting more bites. Now, as far as the tackle that I like to use with the big blade, it's the same as any other chatterbait for me. I like to use a 7.2 to one gear ratio reel. Uh, I like the VLD 10 from Fitzgerald. And the reason I like that gear ratio is because it allows me to catch up with fish really quick if they you know, attack this bait from behind and push slack in the line. And then I use a 7.3 uh, medium heavy Versa series rod, just a really good rod to, to rip this bait out of cover. And it has a good feel to it. I can, I can, I can feel this thing pretty good uh, by itself, but that graphite rod allows me to really know what's going, down, uh, going on down below the surface with it. And then finally, I use 15 to 20 pound test fluorocarbon. I like red label fluorocarbon. This is not a finesse technique at all. You want, you want heavy lines, so that go the heaviest that you can uh, up until that, that 20 pound range. And, uh, and you know, you're gonna be wrestling some big fish with this. But uh, as far as the trailer too, I don't wanna forget about the trailer. Use whatever trailer you like to use with chatterbaits, but remember that this, this bait in general is a little bit bigger than a traditional chatterbait. So use a bigger trailer. I really like the, the Razor Shad from Z-Man this time of year because it allows this bait to have a horizontal fall if I'm yo-yoing it, uh, because it doesn't have any appendages on it that's gonna create drag and make this kind of parachute straight down uh, as opposed to the horizontal fall. So in general, uh, you know, when it comes to muddy water in March, which is very common on the TVA this time of year, as well as many river fisheries uh, around the country, getting a bait that creates a lot of vibration or noise is a big deal. And that's why I throw the big blade chatterbait. Hey guys, if you are enjoying today's video, make sure to hit the subscribe button for us, please. So you do not miss out on any additional content. Also, do not forget about our one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons that we're offering at fishthemoment.com. With these virtual lessons, you'll have an opportunity to meet with one of our team members one-on-one -on -one through a Zoom a Google Meet call, and you will have the chance to ask questions, learn different techniques, and see how one of our team members will attack the body of water that you ask. Just think of that as an opportunity for you as an angler to grow and learn. I know with me as a coach, when I coached for 12 years, man, there were many times that I would go and meet and visit with other coaches, go to conventions, and this for you is an opportunity to grow and learn as an angler. I know you can watch all the videos that we offer, and which is great, and we really appreciate it, but just by sitting down and having you know, list questions there and just getting the feedback from the anglers, you will get something out of it that will make you a better angler. Man, March is like, in my opinion, one of the best months to fish as far as catching quality fish. The bigger female bass are starting to move up a little bit shallower, and it's a really good time uh, to catch some, some really good ones out there in March. So anyway, let's go over the top five here, what I really like is a swing head jig. This is the, uh, just a, you know, Swing head jig, a 5 16 ounce swing head jig. I've got a Zoom Z Craw Junior trailer on it, which is my favorite March trailer. But guys, uh, fishing these on secondary points in the month of March is a really good way to catch them. Um, I try to target that 5 to 10 foot range, just throw it out there, reel it slowly along the bottom. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of chartreuse on the tail but a wobble head or a swing head jig is one of my favorite March lures. Okay, for me, my favorite lure technique uh, to throw in March, I'm gonna talk about lowland reservoirs. And of course I am in the South, so this could be Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana. And this is really, uh, it's not really, I'm gonna say an old school technique, but you, you know, it still catches a lot of fish, but I'm going very, very basic guys. I'm gonna be flipping a creature bait. 
I have one right here. This is the Big Bite Baits Fighting Frog. So I'm going to be flipping baits at pieces of cover. I'm going to be flipping it at grass. It could be uh, woods, laydowns. Guys, I'm looking for pre-spawn fish or fish that are potentially on their beds. And guys, I'm not going to say I'm sight fishing because I'm not one of the ones that's, uh, that that's probably one of my weakest uh, uh, techniques of actually fishing. It is really the weakest is sight fishing. But guys, I'm going to go target areas where these fish are going to be staging up or they're going to be spawning at. A lot of my lakes I fish will get real dirty this time of year, uh, or the lowland reservoirs will get dirty, and water will fluctuate as well, so I can also flip these in bushes. Another uh, lure that I will throw, this is the Big Bite Baits, Yo Mama. So the Yo Mama is a smaller creature bait, okay? As you see, just a little bit shorter than the Fighting Frog. This one's thinner, and this one is a little thicker. Okay, guys, for my setup, okay, I'm going to uh, use a 7.6 flipping rod. It's the Denali, uh, Denali Lithium Pro 7.6 heavy flipping rod, and I'm going to be using Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon. It's going to be in the 18 to 20 pound range. On my hooks, I'm going to be either, you know, depending on, on because it's fighting frog, this is the bigger fighting frog, and they have a smaller one, so I don't just have two on the deck typically. I might have one or, you know, just one on the deck. So if I am going with a smaller one that day, I'll go down to a three-aught size hook, but it, typically I'm going to be that four to five-aught size. Uh, Gamakatsu EWG uh, just hook. That's why I just use the Gamakatsus, guys. I will go uh, different uh, uh, weights on my tungsten. I will use tungsten, okay? If you do not use tungsten and say they are expensive, once you use it, you will not go back. I will tell you that that happened to me about, you know, six, seven years ago. Once I started using tungsten, never went back. So give tungsten a shot. And, you know, I'm going to go with that 5 16 ounce size weight. I'll also, you know, go to the, the 3 8 just depending on my depth and how the fish are acting in that given period, okay? Appreciate you guys watching today's video. Hey, leave us uh, what's your favorite strategy technique to fish in the month of March. We got a bunch of different techniques and styles there. Like I said, every one of them can catch fish. Like I said, if there's one that you are not as good at, let us know and see if you're gonna go try to get better at it or if there's one that you do enjoy. Like for me, I'm ready to get my flipping stick out and go flip and set the hook on them in some shallow water. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.